needs to be, first of all, effectively engaged by big pharma, but these are the ones that will play a major role in the future for the um, precision medicine-based uh, diagnostic. And I, 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 would, I, I can give you an example from molecular health, which already have, has yep. this tool that's called MH Guide. Hello world, this is Better Tech, a podcast where we chat with some of the most successful leaders about the latest industry developments. So join us as we explore the world reliant on tech. This episode is brought to you by Texel, a leading software development company. Check them out at Texel.com. Today we have with us Ashik Khan. Tell us more about how this transformation is currently underway and what developments we will see more of. So before we really delve into the nitty gritties of the topic, since we're all in the midst of a global pandemic, I think what our audience would most like to know firstly is that how can AI help with predicting and controlling such pandemics in the future? Um, Well, you're absolutely spot on. The pharmaceutical industry, it touches millions of lives every year. And in doing so, it relies on huge amount of biomedical data that is used in all processes from developing new molecular entities to measure the effectiveness of established drugs right. based on real world evidence. But considering these new epidemics, for example, so COVID-19, we um, cannot just develop a drug in, uh, in, a, in a amount of a few months or weeks. Normally the drug development process is um, costly, it, it, it costs about uh, two years, um, sorry, two billion dollars, and um, it takes 10 to 12 years to, uh, to develop a drug uh, after going through all these different clinical trials. So, but FDA has a process that is called uh, like, you know, accelerated approval or like, you know, fast track approval. So if there is an, a vaccine that is really effective against the coronavirus, then definitely I'm very hopeful that it will get accelerated approval and hopefully we will have a vaccine. But I would not say that we will have it this year or so, maybe at the end of this year, start of next year or so, because it's, it's, it's that not something that you can develop in a few days or a few months. Right. Yeah. So what is the impact of AI and digitalization on research and development in the pharmaceutical industry? And will it help make new alliances between tech industry and pharma? Um, the thing is, I mean, R&D spending in pharma, this is approaching $180 billion globally, and it takes 10 to 12 years, and an average cost around $2.6 billion to develop a new drug. And the most alarming is like, you know, despite all the high cost and long timelines, the probability of a new drug being approved is only 10 to 12 percent with the linear declining rate of uh, return on interest that is approaching to zero. But what is happening is, but the good news is the pharmaceutical industry as one of the important players in the field of healthcare, they have started to embrace the data-driven digital revolution and the collaboration of uh, big technology companies with uh, pharmaceutical companies is needed to patch up the interoperability and data sharing gap that given that pharma um, need a chance to collect and understand the more comprehensive set of clinical molecular data for research and also streamline their ability for drug development and early commercialization. And we have seen some really, really good progress in this area. For example, the partnership of Glexo, SmithKline, and 23andMe in 2018 um, to identify novel drug targets using human genetics. Similarly, Iliad and Virily, that is from Google, they have also collaboration for immunological and molecular and driver identification. AstraZeneca had a collaboration with Benevolent AI. Gilead has a uh, collaboration with Incitro. And I remember that uh, Roche, they went a step further actually and they acquired Flat Iron and Foundation Medicine to accelerate their oncology specific drug development. So definitely pharmaceutical industry is realizing the potential and they are engaging with the technology industry and I am very confident that the future of pharma industry actually lies 
in the hands of big technology industries like uh, Google, Microsoft, uh, SAP, Amazon, and these will be the future of pharmaceutical industry because the data is increasing at such an enormous speed that classical pharma industry is unable to take care of this data, crawl this data, um, like you know, curate this data and get actionable insight from this data. So there is definitely a need to have a collaboration between uh, pharmaceutical industry and technology industry and any pharmaceutical industry that is any player in the pharmaceutical industry that is missing this chance, if they will be left behind. Certainly, these tech giants can offer some interesting collaborative opportunities for the healthcare industry. And what about the drug development cycle? Is it correct to say that in its current stage, AI is helping transform it? Yes, it is actually, it is, it's definitely, it means, uh, as I mentioned, like you know, a pharmaceutical company needs to put on an average uh, seven candidates through a clinical trial for one new molecular entity to succeed. While data-driven approaches, they can reduce the required number of clinical candidates by half, so it can save approximately 300 millions per drug in the process. And pharma and tech industry, they also partner, partnership have also started to significantly accelerate the drug development process using clinical molecular data. For example, there have been predictive modeling of connections between biological processes, genes, molecular target pathways, and drugs that are helping to identify new candidate molecule. From real world evidence data, pharma industry is now able to map the biological process to develop faster, cheaper, and reliable systems. And similarly, there have been patients that have been provided right medicine using the medical data and genome-guided decision support. Most importantly, we are now using the artificial intelligence and machine learning. We are able to um, actually determine the probability of success for a clinical trial. Not only we are able to determine the probability of success for a clinical trial, we are also able to identify the factors that have contributed towards the success or failure of a clinical trial. This actually reduced time to market. This increased the NPV and uh, like you know, saves around 300 million euros per drug. And we are able to focus on molecules that have high probability of success. So we can do our portfolio management using artificial intelligence and machine learning. Undoubtedly, AI has plentiful use cases in healthcare, but when it comes to its implementation, how will it prevent large-scale automation of healthcare jobs? You know, I, I uh, yeah, <laughs> this, is, this is the threat, actually. Most of the people think like this. Um, to be honest, I would not consider it a threat or like a you know, loss of job. I think artificial intelligence and machine learning technologies, these are sport tools. Okay, they save time, they save effort, and this like you know cut the cost. But they not they don't necessarily cut the jobs. Actually, what they do is they accelerate your the development processes. So I, I I would not be worried that like you know it will affect job and it will cut job because even to do these data analysis, the curation, crawling, and everything, you need human hands. Human hand is necessary. In, along with artificial intelligence and machine learning, so right. so I, I I wouldn't be much worried about the uh, the job. I think this is more of a, a sport tool than a job snatching tool. Right, because mostly we see that there's also talk that people are worried that with AI, you know, taking over, they're going to be out of jobs soon. No, no, that wouldn't be the case because AI is just a sport tool. And even like, you know, I mean, you can definitely, AI and machine learning, what they can do is they can fast and accurately do data crawling and like, you know, data analysis maybe, but they cannot do the data contextualization at this moment. Okay, for example, if you say to, the, to a program to crawl everything that has like, you know, gene X, Y, Z, they will crawl it. But to really understand what is the functionality of the gene, where the pathway is, and to really have an expert eye, you need a human being to really make sense of this. Even at the end of the day, when the results are produced by artificial intelligence and machine learning, you still need an expert eye to really see and contextualize that this is correct and it's not inaccurate. Because, because like, you know, AI and uh, machine learning, they are prone to error. And they, they are also not like, you know, trained as human beings. Right. So 
we know that a lot of companies are adopting this technology well and good but and is there any particular aspect of it from diagnosis to treatment patient engagement that you see that companies are really readily catching on yes um definitely <clears throat> so i think the future of uh, so first of all we need to understand that uh, wrong diagnosis is the third biggest killer after cancer and heart disease so it's very important a doctor in his honest opinion in his best intention he can be wrong okay he will he he can prescribe you the wrong medicine despite this is not a, his intention so it's very important that we use ai and machine learning technologies to help us give the right medicine to the right patient at the right time so what can what we can utilize is we can utilize this genome guided decision support for example if a person has cancer let's say if a person has let's say lung cancer is it, it it is possible that you can take a biopsy of that person lung biopsy of that person you can sequence the biopsy and see where the variants are mutations are that are causing this lung cancer and the variants and mutations they are associated with certain cancers you so you can make this relationship and then there is a tool for example in my company is called molecular health guide that helps doctors to prescribe right medicine for right cancer so you can map these cancers along with the right medicine and then you can prescribe the right medicine that have low side effect and it's suitable for that person so definitely like you know coming back to your question this is uh, the era we are entering it and i think for most of the diseases genome guided um, decision support and genome guided um, um uh, diagnostic would be needed and i think the future and i i would not say far future in, in the near future precision medicine would be the 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 norm in the industry right so in your opinion the diagnosis and prescribing medicine that's the area where most companies are currently using ai yes that's um, most of the it, it's a diverse field like you know definitely this is one of the focused area but this is not the pharmaceutical industry focused area pharmaceutical industry is interested only in developing drugs at a low cost low price and also high um, outcome so this is what they only want to accelerate their drug development process okay and bring it to the market this is what they're interested the second portion that you have mentioned giving right drug with the right dose to the right patient at the right time this is not mainly what pharmaceutical industries are interested in or they are doing it this is done by like you know um you can call it like you know digital healthcare companies like um, molecular health accentia inoplex etc they have decades of experience in the integration and analytics of clinical molecular data and these biomedical intelligence companies they are the catalyst for accelerating the data driven drug development and also um needs to be first of all effectively engaged by big pharma but these are the one that will play a major role in the future for the um, precision medicine based uh, diagnostic and i i i would I, i can give you an example from molecular health which already have has yep. this two this called mh guide for oncology patients okay all right Recently, Harvard's Teaching Hospital, IBM's Watson for Health, and Google's DeepMind Health have been working to apply cognitive technology to unlock vast amounts of health data and power diagnosis. So, how is this paving the way for health startups and SMBs to embrace AI? They are good in crawling, curating, analyzing data, but they are not companies which have very good understanding. of biology or pharma they are they have the pharma knowledge so definitely google amazon apple facebook microsoft they are all attempting to enter the healthcare space but they will remain an experienced player in the industry for years to come i mean biology and medicine they are complex domains that require highly specific knowledge to effectively understand and um, generate actionable insights from clinical molecular data sources and a high level of domain specific expertise is therefore um, essential for taking full advantage of the ongoing biological data revolution i would imagine and i 
also see in the industry that this is happening, that we need an ecosystem where the pharmaceutical industry, technology industry, CROs like clinical research organization and these uh, AI powered biological intelligence companies like Molecular Health, Accenture, Ineplex, they work together. Okay, because then you can bring the data, you can bring the biological knowledge, you can bring integrated biology, you can bring pharma knowledge together, and they can all together act as an ecosystem with the data-driven company actually working on a catalyst to accelerate the drug development process. I would be a bit reluctant to say that, like, you know, um, like you know, big technology companies can very soon reach that level where other, like you know, AI-powered biological intelligence companies are. So I think they need to work together in an ecosystem to benefit from each other because they have different domains and each of uh, these companies, like you know, data-driven companies, they are good in data-driven knowledge and pharma is very good in pharma knowledge. Other companies, they are good in like a you know, biological understanding of the disease and right. target pathway mechanisms. So they need each other and they need to work together to accelerate their uh, processes. So one company would have difficulty doing it all of it alone. So we are anyway living in an ecosystem um, environment, uh, like business environments, I think that would be the future. Right, yeah, absolutely, that makes sense. So we've talked about um, big companies like IBM and Google and their health initiatives. So, but when, it, when we talk about health startups and SMBs, so what do you think are some of the main challenges they are facing when embracing this technology in the healthcare and pharmaceutical fields? Um, I think the main challenge is, um, <clears throat> so first of all, these, these uh, startups actually, I think most of them, if we're talking about pharma startup, they are based on one to five molecules. They are not big companies. And what they have is like, you know, th these are the companies actually that need um, these artificial intelligence and machine learning. As I mentioned before, like, you know, drug development, is um, a high cost and long timeline process. It costs around um, 2 billion euros and 10 to 12 years to develop a single drug. And, and you need an effective R&D division to help you to like, you know, bring you some new molecules before you go into clinical trial. And most of the small biotechs, they don't have this capability where they have a dedicated R&D division of like you know, hundreds of scientists and their own um, laboratories and so that they can develop these new molecules. What they are doing is they are doing two things. One, they are collaborating with these data driven um, like you know companies like you know molecular health and inoplexis to help them provide the contextualization of their molecule to provide the to help them in the r d so this these companies can do that for them because they have uh, excel they can like you know do it in very short period of time based on their um, technologies other thing that these uh, short biotech companies are doing is they that they are repurposing the molecule they are repurposing fallen angels from um, uh, like let's say clinical trial one to phase one two three so any molecule that has failed but still has a potential to be repurposed for some other indication or disease so they are focused on those ones and in in both cases these short biotechs small biotech sorry um they they don't have their own dedicated R&D. They need help from um, like you know, artificial intelligence and machine learning companies who have their own knowledge graph and right. they can help them to provide the biological contextualization. Right. And you mentioned earlier that when it comes to people uh, like myths associated with AI, one of the biggest myths is that people think that AI will replace humans. Mm -hmm. So what are some of the other big myths that people associate when they think of AI's integration with health care? No, I think um, uh, means, you know, clinical molecular data is, is the foundation upon which the um, value adding decisions are founded and availability of digitized biomedical data like uh, electronic healthcare records, safety signal data, for example, that FDA provides fears and World Health Organization also provides VG-based data. Similarly, patient management data, e-health, 
um, multimodal omics, for example, proteomics, genomics, etc., clinical trial data that is brought by FDA, and more than a few other data advancements over the last decades have uh, steered the need uh, for uh, conventional pharma to accelerate their partnership with technology industry to fast track their drug development. So this is evident that like you know artificial intelligence and machine learning will happen it is happening and without this there is no way that this traditional drug development that has been an uh, enigmatic activity conducted within the um, uh, confines of a pharmaceutical industry right with the external collaboration can take place so there is definitely uh, a need um, to integrate biology, to do data-driven biomedical um, research, and it will, as I said before, it will act as a decision sport, it will act as a sporting tool, it, was, it will help you to accelerate your um, decision, it will provide actionable insights, and it will help you to prioritize your clinical pipeline. But more than that, it will not affect any job uh, like, you know, uh, the people's job, etc. It will actually help them ease their daily work. And I think that's something that will really ease people's worries, especially with the ongoing crisis. So, all right, with this, we'll come to the end of our episode. Thanks for joining us. My pleasure. Thanks for listening to this episode by Better Tech. If you enjoyed this podcast, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to share it across your favorite social networking platform. We look forward to bringing you the latest industry news in our next episode. In the meantime, take a look at our other episodes and hit subscribe at the links in the description box below so that you don't miss out on the latest in tech.